Hey everybody, this is Brother Frank, and welcome to another episode of The Remnant Call. Glad to have you here. Uh, I've got a different microphone tonight, so I don't know if it sounds any different than normal. It's my travel microphone, but i um, trying it out. I had to loan my soundboard out to some people that needed it. And uh, so I'm trying this out, and uh, Lord willing, it'll work well. But I want to talk to you tonight about something important. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, I ask that what comes forward, Lord, would be from your throne and not from our flesh, as we are going to learn in this message tonight, the unholy power that is contained in the flesh. And Lord, when I mean power, there is power to lead us in the wrong direction in the flesh. So Lord, we repent and rebuke the flesh in the name of Jesus, that we be free from the temptation of the fleshly voices that try to tell us things that we think are from God, but they are truly from our own spirits. Lord, we ask that you would guide us in the ways of righteousness because we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Folks, I want to talk to you tonight about an important subject, and it comes out of Leviticus chapter 10. And the the flesh, as I was praying about, is a very dangerous, dangerous tool. It speaks frequently. I would say the majority of all the so-called prophecies you hear on the internet are from people's flesh. The fleshly voice likes to talk immediately, and it tells you exactly what you want to hear. I remember years ago, the great David Wilkerson has a wonderful sermon. Uh, You can probably find it, I'm sure, on the internet uh, uh, on hearing the voice of God and the patience it takes to hear God's voice because your flesh wants to speak, wants to prophesy, wants to give a word of knowledge very, very quickly. Folks, I'm not saying that the Lord can't bring something right into your mind that is divine. It's it's guided by the spirit of the living God. Don't get me wrong. I believe in that. But what I'm talking about is so often that that thing, which is purely of the flesh, gets translated and told to everybody that it's from the spirit that it's a revelation of God. I know I've been in the services before when I've watched people talk in false tongues, when I've watched people talk and prophesy because they just out of their own mouth and it was their flesh. And I knew it was, it was so easy to tell and the people were in awe over it. And it was nothing but a gimmick because the Lord does speak. Don't get me wrong, folks. I believe in prophecy. I believe in a word of knowledge. I believe in the gifts of the Spirit, but they do not come from our own flesh, and we need to be careful. In Leviticus chapter 10, there is a prime example of this very thing. And Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took either of them his censer and put fire therein. And put incense thereon and before strange fire before the Lord, which he commanded them not. And there went out fire from the Lord and devoured them, and they died before the Lord. Then Moses said unto Aaron, This is that the Lord spake of, saying, I will be sanctified in them that come nigh me, and before all the people I will be glorified. And Aaron held his peace. Now, the interesting thing is there's a lot of guesses, but nobody really knows what that strange fire is. But one thing that can be truly discerned was this fire was from Nadab and Abihu's own desire, their own flesh, their own way of preparing the fire. It wasn't sanctified and wholly purified like the Lord had commanded it to be. It was their own fire that they brought in. This was like the sacrifice of Cain. He decided that 
he was going to make fruit his sacrifice instead of animal. And he was angry when the Lord did not accept it because he wanted his worship his way. It was his own strange fire and the Lord didn't accept it. And here Nadab and Abihu thought that they could bring their own concoction, their own mixture, their un- unholy, sanctified, unsanctified fire and and present it before the Lord and, and expect God to, to accept it. And I hear that so often. And I know that so often today in believers' lives, well, the Lord accepts me how I am. Folks, yes, the Lord will accept you in how you are, but he loves you too much to leave you that way. And we, we, the danger we're running into is thinking that we can somehow create a God that has to accept uh, his word on our terms and our conditions. And what it leads to is a lack of true holiness in the body of, of the Lord and in the remnant, thinking that they can somehow bring their own sacrifice that they have declared to be holy when the Lord says this is the way that he desires it to be. It is the same thing that happened with Korah and Korah's rebellion. He wanted to be in a position that he was not called to be in, but he felt that that was his right to be in there. And so he went up and challenged Moses. And well, you know what happened. They went and they put their rods in overnight and Aaron's rod budded and the earth swallowed up Korah and his rebellion because he was going after a position that the Lord had not called him to. Folks, I am sending this out as a warning in this hour to be very careful to not demand God or try to to create a form of worship that the Lord does not desire and call it holy. God has always been clear in the past how he desires us to worship him and to love him and to care for him. And folks, I'm not saying you need to make this difficult. Don't get me wrong. I'm not talking about that. But I'm talking about when certain practices are allowed in the body of Messiah and said to be holy when God calls them profane. You know it. You see it in churches today with the homosexuality and the adultery and the open fornication that is going on in this world and they are calling it holy and pastors that are saying profane and vain things before their congregation and and members living how they want to live and calling it holy and acceptable, claiming the name of the Lord, but walking in their own flesh. That is actually a violation of the third commandment of not taking the name of the Lord in vain. The third commandment is not about saying GD, listen, do not say GD. Don't get, I would not ever recommend cursing the Lord's name or using his holy name in a curse form. Don't, but the third commandment is talks about when we are carrying, it says actually the root word actually means to carry, not to take, but to carry the name of the Lord. And when we go out, our actions, what the things we do, the way we act, we are carrying the Lord's name. And when we do foolish stuff like this, we are carrying it in vain. And that is what is going on today, unfortunately, and I'm trying to warn people to stop this mess that is going on. Stop this craziness from the things of posting on Facebook and things that are just unbiblical, unnecessary, and, and they're not holy and godly. Now, so I noticed there's so many people that are worried about wearing their their T-shirts that say something about Jesus or the crosses around their neck and all these different things. When you know what God wants, he desires us to actually walk in holiness and in truth and obedience and faith before him. Not with all your your paraphernalia that says you're a Christian, but actual actions and heartfelt commitment that reflect from the inside to the outside of who you are in the Lord Jesus. You know, like my father would often say that our faith, it's like a boat going down the river and your works That's the wake that comes behind it. It's natural. It happens automatically. If you have faith, you will have works. You will do the things of God. You don't do the things of God in order to earn your favor, but because you walk in his way and you love him, the things of God are a part of your walk and therefore works are nothing but the outward reflection of the inward walk. And if there is no works, there's no desire, there's no outreach, there's no nothing. You need to re-examine yourself. 
and maybe ask yourself, are you bringing strange fire into the Lord's house? Because we know that our bodies are a temple of the Holy Ghost. And if you wonder why the Lord's not maybe not showing up as often sometimes. Now, there are times we go through the desert. Don't get me wrong like Job did. But we also can pollute the Lord's house with strange fire. And we need to stop that. And I want to turn to the book of Jude, one of my favorite, absolute favorite books in the Bible. And we've touched on Jude in the past, but I I just, I don't know any other better answer just about than the book of Jude on how we are to avoid these things and what we are to do in the, in the face of what we are up against right now. We are now living in a very hostile society, a society who doesn't want us to follow the Lord, a society that calls us uh, people that we're now considered to be killers, that we are wanting to kill people because we don't want to be vaccinated or different things like that. And they are turning people off and shutting us down and cutting off the ante, uh, as you saw to Florida this week, how they're turning off, uh, cut the supply in half uh, of the uh, of the medications and treatments for COVID down there because they consider the government governor too conservative and people that don't want to take vaccinations that we are somehow the enemies of the world well folks that is actually true you are an enemy of the world not because you're trying to harm people but because you're following jesus christ and they believed he was an enemy of the world and so folks we should not be surprised but jude gives us this he brings us right to this moment in history that we are facing right now Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and the brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ and called. There's that sanctification word. There are those those that that we were referring back to when when jo, when the uh, Moses was talking in Leviticus, you know, about this will be sanctified before the Lord. These people will shall be sanctified. Verse two, mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was necessary for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Now, we've talked about this in a radio show I did a while ago. I don't know how long, maybe a year or two, whatever it was ago. But we talked about this verse that he says, listen, I need you to do something right now, Judas saying. I want you to contend by the spirit of the living God, Judas speaking here. I want you to contend for the faith that is one those once delivered unto the saints. And there's a reason that he is opening this book with this statement. He's not talking to the unbeliever. He's talking to those that are believers, those that are the remnant, those that are in the family of God. This is who he's trying to reach here. He says this, for there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation ungodly men turning the grace of god into lasciviousness and denying the only lord god and our lord jesus christ he's saying listen here's the problem we're facing in jude's day we're facing it now again in our day that there are people who have now crept in men of old who are turning god's grace into lasciviousness or licentiousness and that means a license to sin it's okay grace covers everything because of grace you can do what you want once you're saved always save do whatever brother it doesn't matter because you're okay that's heresy that's a lie that does not come from god and jude is saying if you want to combat this kind of a lie this kind of strange fire that has been bringing being brought into god's house and i'm telling you folks there are so-called watchmen programs out there who bring strange fire behavior patterns into the lord's uh camp by some of the teachings that they teach and i'm telling you it's disgraceful and it's hideous and it's disgusting and jude says if you want to fight this If you want to stand up strong against this, he said, you need to contend for the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. Now that word, I love it, contend, it actually means to strive, meaning you got to go after this thing. 
You've got to seek the Lord with all your heart. You've got to dig your heels in, start reading, start praying and fasting and meditating upon his word and spending time alone with him so that you can obtain that same faith that was once delivered to the saints. Jude is not asking something by the spirit of the living God. He's not saying something that is impossible. He's saying this is absolutely possible. The Lord would never ask us to do something that is impossible to do. God is saying this is absolutely not only possible, it is necessary and the only form of combating this, uh, combating this problem we have today, the only form of protection is to contend for that faith once delivered to the saints because that means what we're going to do. We're going to put on that armor of God talked about in Ephesians. We're going to begin to display those fruits of the Spirit that was talked about in Galatians. We're going to begin to walk in the ways of holiness that the Lord spoke of when he was here on this earth about his father. Be ye holy as our father, his father in heaven was holy. We will start to do things. But Jude goes on to remind us. He says, I'll put you in remembrance Though ye were once knew this, how that the Lord having saved the people out of the land of Egypt afterwards destroyed them that believe not. Did you hear that? He delivered them. They were set free, but they turned back to their old ways and God ended up destroying them. He said, and the angels that kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation. He hath reserved an everlasting chains under darkness, under the judgment of the great day. Yes, there it is. There were, even though there were angels, they were in the kingdom. They walked with our heavenly father. They knew the goodness of God. They turned away from his holiness and they are now reserved in darkness until the judgment. And even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh are set forth as an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal. Did you hear that? Fire, meaning they were burned up for good. He says, you can't expect homosexuality to be justified. This going after strange flesh and all the pornography and the things that are going on today, that that's somehow going to be acceptable in the Lord's sight. Because you remember what happened to Sodom and Gomorrah? Don't even think about it. This is what he says about these people, though. These ones that came in unaware, likewise also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion and speak evil of dignities. They don't want anybody to tell them what to do. They don't want anybody to tell them. Yet Mar Michael, the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, Durnos, durst not bring against him a railing accusation but said the lord rebuke thee see the problem is those people love to speak in their own flesh they like to rebuke the devil from their own flesh look folks i'm going to tell you right now even michael when rebuking the devil he didn't do it in his own name he said the lord rebuke you it was not his own flesh it was in the power of the Lord. His authority came from God, not from himself, which these filthy despisers of the flesh and dominions, they love to speak in their own cowardiceness. And you hear them always talking about their great ways of spiritual uh, uh, deliverance and all this stuff, which is so dangerous, their methods. But these speak in verse 10, evil of those things which they know not but that they know naturally as brute beasts in those things they corrupt themselves. All they're doing is speaking a bunch of garbage. They're corrupting themselves. They're corrupting the body of believers that are listening to this filthy stuff that is bringing strange fire into God's house. Listen, folks, you and I will not survive what's coming. You and I cannot stand up against what's coming in our own flesh. Peter tried to stand in his flesh. Lord, I will not deny you. And he denied the Lord three times. But when he got filled with the spirit of the living God and he began to live in the power of his holiness and it says when he was so ho walking in such holiness that his very shadow was healing the people as he walked by, that's what it means to contend for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. So powerful that even the shadows of God's believers is powerful enough to heal people these are spots in your feasts of charity 
when they feast with you, feeding themselves with fear, without fear. Clouds they are without water, carried about of winds, trees whose fruit withereth, without fruit twice dead, plucked up by the roots, raging waves of the sea, foaming out of their own shame, wandering stars, to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. These people, the Bible says, get away from them. They're nothing but spots in your feasts, feeding themselves without fear. There's no fear of the Lord in them because they everything's holy and acceptable in their eyes. There's no such thing as the righteousness of God anymore. It is now the righteousness of what they deem to be righteous. They are clouds. They are without water and they are carried about with the winds. It's one thing after another, after another. Folks, have you ever been to a truly charismatic, unholy, I'm talking about service where the people are really working working in their flesh. I'm not putting down everybody. Don't get me wrong. But I'm talking about one of these people that are living in the flesh. You'll see the same people up week after week after week trying to get delivered the same things over. There's never any true deliverance because it's all flesh. But when you get serious, as Jude talks about, and strive for the faith that is once delivered to the saints, to contend for it, to want it, to seek ye first the kingdom of God, and then all things shall be added. He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. If we begin to live like that, you will watch the power of God begin to flow freely in your life. And there is no other way. Quit fooling yourself. You can go get the book in the prayer of Jabez and read it all you want. But if you don't buckle down on your knees and get serious with God, don't be surprised when he's not speaking. If you don't open up the word of God and read, don't be surprised when he doesn't say anything. And if you don't spend any time alone with him, don't be surprised when you feel like a dry twig in the middle of the desert because God can commune with those who spend time with him. But if we don't spend time with him, don't deceive ourselves that God will spend that time back with us. Now, folks, he never leaves us nor forsakes us, but he does allow us to go on our right ways and do the things we want to do. But at any moment, if you will cry out and you will come back to him, He is faithful and just to turn around. Folks, you can listen to a million podcasts out there. You can listen to the next great thing. You can listen about the return of the Nephilim. You can listen to about transhumanism. You can listen to star portals. You can listen to whatever it is that people are talking about. And I'll tell you what, maybe you'll have some more knowledge on some certain topics. Maybe you'll be led astray. But I can tell you right now that if you will follow this advice from the very word of God, that your life will be changed and you can throw that other stuff away. And I'll tell you what, you don't even need to listen to the remnant call. I'm glad you do, but I would rather you spend time in God's word alone than only listening to this program because the Lord will lead you Brother Frank will not. My job is simply to point you to the Lord. Your job is to seek his face. We are living in absolute perilous times. And these take perilous measures. We are at war in the physical and in the spiritual. And as believers, we must fight on our knees. It's the only path to survival. This is Brother Frank on the Remnant Call saying good night and shalom. Trumpet in time